Yeah, the first thing I want to do is just to apologise to all the passengers who have been disrupted over the last few days. And the challenge that we're experiencing at the moment at the airport is really around staff shortages. We just can't get enough people into the jobs. And then when you have the, the COVID rules around isolation, if you're positive or you're close contact, it's, it's meant that on any given day we're operating at 60% of pre-COVID staffing levels dealing with 90% of pre-COVID passenger levels and the math leads you to where you are. It's not a surprise though, it's school holidays in New South Wales and Victoria and there's a big international sporting event in Melbourne being the F1. Well, you're not ready. Yeah, no, the, the, the case is not really one of us not being ready. We actually anticipate that this would happen and back in December last year when we got a sense that the border was going to open internationally and that state borders were coming down, we went out into the market and started recruiting. Remember that we were 99% down in September, October last year. This industry has been completely smashed and we've been building from the ground up. So we were recruiting back in December, but we just can't get the people into the roles because we're all fighting over the same resources. You speak to anyone in the hospitality industry, they're, they're struggling with the same issue. Why is it so hard to attract staff back to the airport industry after those long COVID shutdowns? Are the pay and conditions right? The Transport Workers Union says they're not. Yeah, I don't think it's an issue of pay and conditions. It's more a fact that there's, yeah, there's more uh, demand for jobs than there is supply across the entire market at the moment. And I would also say that the aviation sector has been a hard place to attract people to because there's a lack of job cert certainty here. Now, people actually are worried about job security, they're worried about job certainty. There are other sectors of the economy that have not been impacted anywhere near as badly as aviation. So how do you communicate job security? Is there job security in the airport industry? I think there is now and I think the government have done a really strong job around, around messaging to people that we're not going back into lockdown and we're coming out of COVID and we're moving on and we're going to live with COVID. I thought the New South Wales government were really great over the course of the weekend when they put airport workers on the critical list so they no longer have to self-isolate if they're a close contact. Things like that make a massive difference. Well, is there a plan to get new staff? Are you just hoping that the recruitment ads will work? Well, our big request of, of government, which they have answered, was to get the international border open. And that happened at the start of the year. And so now we're in a position where, where students can get back into the country, we can get skilled workers back into the country. Uh, visa processing is, is happening at the moment as we speak, as people are trying to get back into the country. And so now it's just a case of getting more people into the labour market and we will do everything we can to make the airport an attractive place for people to come and work. The Transport Workers Union's National Secretary Michael Kane has been calling for a federal commission to be established to set standards for air travel. Would that help? I, I heard Michael's comments and I thought that what he was saying uh, did make sense. I think as we've come out of the worst crisis to hit the aviation industry in its history, there is going to be a need to understand how do we build the industry back. As I said, we were 99% we were of our business went away for the better part of, of two years. So there's a, we're building from the ground up and there is going to be a need to, to, to build back and get back to where we were. The more immediate issue that I'm dealing with is just the labour shortages right now and trying to make sure that we manage the challenges at the airport over the next few days. So there's a short term and a long term issue here we're grappling with. But I've got to say, everyone in the industry is working really closely together on this. Qantas has walked back from recent comments that air travellers are out of practice and you've distanced yourself from that sentiment too. Is there a bit of truth to it though? There is an element of everyone being new at this. I myself travelled overseas for the first time a couple of weeks ago and I was making mistakes all over the place. I left my passport on the plane as I was transiting through Dubai. I only filled out one side of the passenger card as I was coming through customs when I landed here in Sydney. So I think everyone's just getting back into the swing of things. But I want to, I want to stress, no one's blaming the passengers. We are heading into the Easter weekend. Can you give us some clarity as to when these bottlenecks will ease and when it might get back to some sort of normality? Yeah, well, the passenger numbers that we're looking at over the Easter weekend indicate is going to be another challenging 
couple of days, particularly Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And then actually at the end of the school holidays around uh, Anzac Day, I think will be challenging. We're looking at having around about 80,000 passengers come through on Friday. We had 80,000 passengers come through last Friday and we're dealing with similar labour shortages. So I don't think that uh, the situation is going to resolve itself overnight, but we are throwing everything we can at it. I want to be honest, it's going to be a tough couple of days coming up and we're just bracing ourselves for it and doing everything that we possibly can. Jeff Colbert, thank you for your time. All right, thanks Alicia, appreciate it, bye.